Your what? I'm for independence. It's inevitable. We settled this country, fought the Indians, cleared forests. Now we're rich in Santa Ana knows it. Only too well. Texas destiny is independence. Now listen here, Warden. You sit down. Sit down and listen to me talk. When I opened up this country, Warden, I promised the Mexican government one thing. I promised them that our settlers would become Mexican citizens, loyal ones. You know as well as anybody in this country that my word is as good as my bond in Mexico. They've always trusted and respected you. Well, that's because I've never lied to them. But suppose our settlers revolt. Then what does that do to me, Stephen Austin? True. But you're only one man. What about these 30,000 others? I'm thinking of them. You must remember that Santa Ana is a dictator, that he has an organized army of veterans, while we, well, we have our rifles and our anger. But they still have one great advantage. Well? Organization. While we're scattered over 500 miles of wild country. Now, why not take it easy? United, we're all powerful. Now, here's my plan. We'll call a meeting, a convention of all Texas. And we'll hold it right here in San Felipe just as soon as the rains are over. Right. But I warn you, Austin, the time for half measures has passed. We'll discuss, but we'll act. Uh, why not stay here tonight? Thanks. I'll put up at the tavern. Just as you say. Luke, Mr. Wharton, sing for you. I'll see you before I leave. Yes, do. Good night. Good night. Master Austin, is there going to be a war? Is there going to be bloodshed? No. No, Luke. No, it, it mustn't come to that. Yeah. Mrs. Dickinson, when will my breakfast be ready? You've already had your breakfast. This is for me. Indeed, Mrs. Dickinson. You'd eat the food right out from under your husband's nose, I see. And I see I'll have to go butcher another pig. None of your impertinence, girl. I said he died of course of having its effect on you. I'll be feeding you out of a trough. Pretty flip, I should say. I think I'll just have to give you a taste of following the plow. Let you raise a little corn, cotton. Then maybe you'll appreciate the fine husband you want. And I'll set you to cooking and washing and spinning and making your own clothes. <laughs> Wait, wait. Man's work is from sun to sun. A woman's work is never done in Texas. And I wouldn't have any other woman in the wide world but you, Anne. Do you know what day this is, Mrs. Dickinson? Yes, I know. Just one year ago today, I carried you in that door. Doesn't seem that long ago, does it? Happy, Anne? Happy. Yes, I am happy. You know, this year we're going to get even more for our cotton than we got last year, in spite of the taxes, doggone them. What do you say to a nice wedding trip at harvest time? New Orleans. Oh, Al, New Orleans. You'd like that, huh? Oh, I'd love it. But, Al, will things be all right by that time? Well, uh, what do you mean? Well, the men are oh, talking about the Mexicans, and, and they say we'll have to take Texas for our own. But all that would mean war. Just a lot of talk. Nobody wants war anyway. Big mouths, nothing up here. Well, you stay out of it and stay out of politics. Sure, I'm no politician. I'm a farmer. Well, you used to be a soldier. That was a long time ago. We haven't got time to fight in this country, Ann. We're building it. Shucks, in a couple of years, I'll build you the prettiest house you ever saw. Two stories, tall columns out in front, just like back in the United States. You can't fight and build a house at the same time. Oh, I know. It's all a lot of talk. Well, you better be off to town now. I need uh, coffee beans and flour and sugar and salt. Now, I guess that's all. And don't you forget them. I won't. What's for dinner tonight? Pork. Pork. Mary 
Sam Dickinson. Well, give it to me, friend. I'll be seeing Dickinson. Where are you riding from, partner? Van Fleet. Wonder who Dickinson knows up that away. It's Stephen Austin. That's who it is. Say, ain't everyone that can get letters from Austin. How's the feelings up that way? You know what I mean. Feelings bad. People can't get in from the States no more. Relations and that sort of thing. There's a lot of talk, I'm telling you. Well, there'll be more than talk. If that fellow Santiago thinks he can sit down in Mexico City and tell us Americans what to do, there'll be a mind of shooting, I'm thinking. Well, I'm on my way to Bear. So long, boys. So long. So long, partner. Hey, Dickinson, what's the matter? There's a letter just come for you, Al. Leif's got it in the store. Oh. Well, where's it from? Sam Philippe. Do you think it might be from Austin? I don't know. So that's Dickinson. Yeah. Biggest landholder in Gonzales. Just a kid. He's got a mighty fetching wife, too. She's just a kid. <laughs> I, I was out that. Well, Leif, let's see now. I want a bag of salt, a bag of sugar, coffee beans. I guess that's about all. Say, here you got a letter for me. Yes, sir. Here she is. Who's she from, Al? Well, it's from Austin. Boys, I'm in politics. Always said you'd come to some bad end. <laughs> the fact you boys are going to have to get out and lecture for me now. What's Austin wants you to do? Wants me to be a delegate to a convention. All Texas, first one we've ever had. April, South Felipe. Well, you're going in jail. Wouldn't miss it. Austin wants me special, said so. Well, if Stephen Austin wants you to go, it's up to us to send you out. <laughs> we'll elect you. Well, thank you, boys. Now I'm a politician. I guess I'll have to spend a little money. The drinks are on me. Now you're going. Come on down here, lady. What happened? Well, there's no way. Well, gentlemen, I'll have...
Hello there. Jim Bowie. Why, hello, Warden. Did you have a hard trip down? Yes, river's still pretty high. Heavy rains up north. Are you all ready for the fight? What fight? Oh, come now. Everybody knows that you and Stephen Austin are due to fight it out at this convention. Yes, and what this colony needs is a little fight in its blood. Order! Gentlemen, a crisis faces us. For the past two years, we have seen the ruler of Mexico break and throw away the solemn promises made by his predecessors. General Santa Ana has levied taxes upon us. And we thought there would be no taxes. He has sent soldiers here to collect those taxes. And now, suddenly, without any reason whatsoever that we know of, our kin folks and our friends have been barred from crossing this border. The soldiers stopped my wife and kid. Frank Hunter's brother and his wife had to go back to Tennessee. Uh, just, just a minute, gentlemen. There is a way to deal with this situation. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Watson. What's the use of talking all day here? If you think this Santa Ana is going to pay attention to anything we say, you're paying at the moon. He knows just one thing, that here in Texas are 30,000 Americans who aren't his kind of old. And that's just 30,000 too many to suit him. He's going to run us the way he runs Mexicans. And we can stand for it. Or we can... Mr. Wharton, I don't think... Or we can show we won't stand for it. We don't have to take his kind of government. Soldiers, spies, broken promises. Why, he has spies among us here at this very moment. I'll bet. Mr. Wharton, must I remind you that we meet here on Mexican soil? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Bowie, I'm no speaker, but what I want to say is I think William Wharton has the right idea. We can't be run from Mexico City. It's too far away. And if things ain't changed, there's bound to be some fighting. And we might as well get used to the ID. Yeah. Yeah, Colonel Austin. Yeah. My name is Travis. I'm a lawyer. And even a lawyer can see when things reach a point that law won't do. Now, there's other ways than fighting. And I personally am willing to try some of those ways first. Colonel Austin, I call on you, the founder of Texas. What is your suggestion? Thank you, Mr. Travis. Friends, Mr. Bowie has said that we must not be ruled from Mexico City. And he's right. We must be ruled from Texas. <laughs> then let us adopt a petition calling on the Mexican government to create this colony a sovereign state of the Republic of Mexico. And let us take that to General Santa Ana. A petition? I'm for independence now. I'm for taking the bull by the horns. And if it means fight, why fight? Any Texan is a match for 10 Mexicans. I'm for statehood. But there's one thing I think we've overlooked. I understand Mr. Wharton is a bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a wife. To defend her, I'll fight, and I'll fight quick. But I won't say yes to any revolution that will strike at her or any other Texan's wife or mother until we've tried everything else. I say, send Stephen Austin to Santa Ana with our demands. In Mexico City, he's trusted, respected. And if he can't succeed, no one can. But I say, let him try. And if he fails... Colonel Austin, I second that motion. Gentlemen, the proposition is before this meeting. All those in favor? Aye! And those against the motion? Carry. Gentlemen, I leave for Mexico City to present your petition to General Sagan.
Castillo? Why was not the plotting of this Major Rodriguez discovered sooner? No one suspected, Excellency. He dropped so swiftly. Almost too swiftly. Cost. Your spies, they are not very efficient. Will not happen again, Excellency. Our soldiers came just in time. Did you capture Captains Morales and Constanza? We did, Excellency. Bring them to me. Bring in the prisoners. Well, gentlemen, you sought to overthrow me, eh? You know what happened to your fellow conspirator, Major Rodriguez? Your fate will be the same as his. Take them out. have returned from Texas. From Texas? They report the American colonists in great state of discontent. Is it by chance they find my tax levies and customs going? They hate them. Indeed, no doubt they resent the closing of their borders. At the settlement of San Felipe in April, they called the convention for the express purpose of discussing your actions and decrees. They should never have been allowed in Texas. Excellency, even now a messenger is riding toward Mexico City with the demands of this convention. Ah, oh. and who is this messenger to send? His name is Stephen Austin. Austin? Ah, oh, it was he who first planted this troublesome brood of Americans north of the Rio Grande. Well, let him come. Let him come. Thank you, Your Excellency. 
I understand you have been in Mexico City for some time. Now, tell me, what brings you here? Well, I have the honor, sir, of being the authorized representative of your colonists in Texas. Ah, yes. And what is the reason that my colonist in Texas sent an authorized representative to see me? This, Your Excellency. The sincere petition of 30,000 Mexican citizens. As you will read in it, we in Texas feel that we merit a greater part in the government of our colony, uh, considering the prosperity that our labors have brought to it. It is for this reason, sir, that we ask the Mexican government to make Texas a state, a sovereign part of the Republic of Mexico. But, senor, that could never be. Never, Your Excellency. It is I... not a part of my policy to grant statehood to Texas. And may I ask why not? Because Texas is too close to the United States. And I do not trust the Americans who live there. But, sir, Texas is loyal and will remain loyal as long as you grant her people a voice in their own rule. Suppose, senor, uh, I do not grant it. What then? May I remind your excellency that the cry of the New England colonists during the American Revolution was no taxation without representation. You draw disturbing parallels, senor. Those colonists revolted. Yes. And founded a great nation. So, it is revolution you threaten me with. I do not threaten your excellency. I simply show you and tell you how you can depend on the loyalty of Texas. I said I did not trust Texas. Need I add that I do not trust you, Senor Austin? But your excellency, I cannot. Uh, Was it not you yourself who summoned those Americans to meet at San Felipe? Where they shouted treason and revolt in broad daylight? Will you deny that, Senor Austin? We met as free born men, your excellency, to exercise the freedom of speech and of assemblage. We committed no treason. You did not ask my permission to meet. Must I teach you, senor, that there is no right in Mexico save those granted by Santa Ana? Your Excellency, will you listen to me? You are like all these Americans. Wherever they are, they must rule. Well, you will not rule here. You wish to steal Texas and make it a part of the United States. That's not true. My only wish has been to live as a loyal citizen of Mexico. So, do not try to deceive me. I know your plot. My soldiers will stay in Texas. And you, Senor Austin, you will stay here. Arrest him. General Santa Ana, you have made your first mistake. Have you ever known me to let anything interfere with my meals? No. Oh, <laughs> 
surprise myself, Ben. Just more is a mule, you know. Well, that's it's already. Now, where are those men? Well, they're probably here. Woo! Here they are. What about you? What about you? How's it looking? Come on, boys. All right. Let's go. 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 Let
Go on, release him. He can do nothing now, only carry back to his rebels news of my power. Perhaps they will hear and grow wise. Give him a horse. Let him go. Yes, Excellency. Where is that fellow? Everybody wake up. Where is Lane? Wake up, Lane. What's the matter? What's up? Mexicans and they're marching this way. Marching this way? What for? You got a cannon and they want it. You better call out your militia. I'm riding to warn the people along the Brazos. You hold them here and we'll have help within six days. Hold them? Hmm. Will you send them running back faster than they come? No, no we never heard of that cannon. They're figuring on surprising you sometime tomorrow. Addy Austin, good luck. Addy Gun and ride for town. There's a Mexican troop a few miles away. We think they're after that cannon. Right on ahead. I'll be there by daybreak. Al, what is it? The Mexicans, honey. You, you've got to go. Sure, it'll only be a skirmish. Don't you worry. But Al, it'll be war. You know it'll be sure, war. Sure, all Texas knows it'll be war. It had to come. We couldn't go on this way. You. You won't take too many chances, will you? Not a blessed one. Al. Huh? We, we haven't had our trip to New Orleans yet. We'll get to New Orleans. Just you wait and see. tomorrow morning for the United States. We must have outside help if we are to defend ourselves. And we'll get it. Travis, I leave you in command here. Boy stays with you. 
Remember, gentlemen, that at all costs, and no matter what happens, there must be hell. We've held it for three months, and nothing's happened since we changed cars back across the Rio Grande. But I know Santa Ana. He'll be back, and with an army. And until Sam Houston organizes an army and marches here, this is our last outpost, and it must be held at all costs. Colonel Austin, there will be hell. Now, our provisional government is organizing. Reinforcements and supplies will be sent to you just as quickly as possible. Don't forget this, that this garrison here is the one garrison that blocks the road to Santa Ana's progress to our settlements. And gentlemen, he's coming. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Colonel. Nothing's gonna happen, do we, boys? No. no. So we're leaving. We've got farms and families, and they need us. You know how many men I've got to defend this town? Oh, I don't need defendants. Anyhow, you haven't got any authority to keep it. That's right. I can't hold you here. But a few more men like you desert on me, and there won't be any families left in Texas for anybody to worry about. Now go on. Get out! Oh, this war is over. We're going home. If you fellas knew anything, you'd come, too. I wish I could be as sure about everything as they seem to be. I'm sure. I'm sure this lull won't last much longer. Dickinson? Something, too. I can feel it in the air. And men deserting on me like this? I haven't any authority to keep them here. Good Lord, man. Do you know how many men I have left now to defend Bear? Less than 150. And so little powder and shot left, why, one good fight and we'd use all we have. Well, aren't we getting any supplies from the provisional government? Provisional government? You mean provisional do-nothing. They already tell me that they're squabbling over who's to be president of Texas. Do you care if I make a suggestion, Colonel Taylor? No, go ahead. Of course, we... Short of shot, men, powder. All right. It's my notion. We moved into the Alamo. You know that deserted old mission just outside of town. We could hold that against all Mexico. Hasn't got a roof, but the walls are thick. It's got water. Dickerson? You're right. Hello? What's this? Grandy with an army, and he's headed toward Bear. Now, the war isn't over yet. It's just begun, and we're Texas's only army. Are we going to fight? You yeah! Are. Now, we have little time to get ready. You ride north. Tell them we need food, ammunition, and reinforcements. Jim Boyd. Here, sir. Now, there's little corn left in Bear, but there is. I want you to round it up and take it over to the Alamo. Boys, we're going to fortify the Alamo mission. James Bonham. Yes, sir. I want you to throw a barricade around the main gate. Take as many men as you want. Yes. 
Dick? Yes, sir. I want you to get the cannon and what ammunition we have and get it in the Alamo by tomorrow night. I'll need a gun crew. You'll have them. Bell, Jim? Yeah. Dang little corn we've been able to get. You know where we can find any more? No. But I was just thinking. We won't be having no banquets. You won't be having any stomach aches either. This ain't no barbecue, you know. It's a fourth. Sure. But do you think it'll last us? It'll have to. Put this back up in there. Keep on it, Jeff. Get that lot of cake, Hank. Chop your wheel there. How about it, Bob? Still hold. Good. Well, let them come now. You ready, Dickinson? We're ready. Any sign of anything yet, Colonel? Not yet. We expect that scout's back any moment now. Colonel Trevor! Yes? Stranger's coming toward the gate. Someone, stranger? I'm looking for Colonel William B. Travis in the Texan Army. Well, this is what's left of it. I'm Travis. Who might you be? My name's Davy Crockett. These are my friends. Maybe you heard of me and maybe not. Anyway, you got any fighting to do? You Davy Crockett from Tennessee? That's me. Well, who hasn't heard of you? But this isn't Tennessee, Davy. What the creation brings you down here? But welcome. Well, this is the nearest fight I could find. You see, Travis. It's a long story, but the meat of it's this. The numbskull voters in Tennessee wouldn't send me back to Congress for another term. And I figured your little war here was the next best thing to Congress. Well, if it's fighting you're looking for, you may get an overdose with us. An overdose? Why, uh, let's see. It's, it's Mexicans you're fighting, ain't it? That's right. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. One fight's just like another to me and old Betsy here. I reckon I'll stay and help. You're sure welcome, Davy. Bring my horse in, boys. Come on inside. I want to talk to you. Tell me about this Look 
Captain Colonel Mark. <laughs> Yes, sir. You think you can cut through those lines? Try, sir. Good. Be ready to ride in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. you never rode before. A great deal depends on you tonight. God be with you. Dickerson? Dickerson? How are we for powder and shot after today? One more good attack will use it all. Pray God that he gets through. Coughing. 
Oh, it's my old trouble. It's a fine time for it to strike me. <coughs> Hello, Billy. Howdy, Jim. Good morning, Miss Dickinson. Good morning. Well, well, how's the patient this morning? Oh, kind of stove up, Billy. <coughs> I have some of the boys to carry out in the yard. Do you feel well enough? Yes. All right, I'll get them. Just cut his way through the line behind me, sir. Good. How many minutes you got with him? Just 30. Just 30? How about the government? Any news from ma'am? Are they sending any more help? They sent their last 500 men to invade Mexico. You mean they sent them to... They'd only listen to Sam Houston. Yes. If they only had to listen to him. you want to. Now, if any of you want to leave, this is your last chance. Their life. 
Can it be they don't know their doom, all of them? Ah, oh, these Americanos. Besides, they will not know until dawn that it was their last night. Good night, General. To our success tomorrow. shots used up. One more attack will finish it. When it's gone, they'll come swarming in here, murdering and killing and... Oh, you are thinking about you and her. I made my choice for all of us. We're together. And darling, whatever happens to us, Texas will go on. A Texas so great so wonderful in the years to come that you and I can't even imagine. But without us, without the Alamo, that Texas could never be. Why, its life will be our lives.
Well, let's the floor all the glory. Who else, huh? Houston, 
the man that murdered my husband. The man that slaughtered 183 heroic men. Sent you a message by me. I won't give you that message. I'll give you another message. The message that those men whose bodies are burning in the port they held bid me give to you. Remember the Alamo. Thank <laughs> you.